You have probably heard about 60 fields of research, like terabit per second transmissions, volumetric video, the Internet of Things, digital twins. Even though these topics are some of the hottest at the moment, they're not the only ones. All their related areas are gaining traction too, like new materials. One potential candidate for 6G is graphene, a form of carbon that promises to make communications at the terahertz band possible. They could even help to develop faster the Internet of Nanothings, which investigates how to connect the things at the nanoscale level. We have been able to show to use graphene not only as the antenna or the modulator, which is what we started almost 10 years ago when we were coming with it. We also showed how we can use graphene, even by itself, to be able to generate a terahertz signal from scratch. Like, you know, you connect your battery to this device and you have a terahertz signal coming out. We're talking about, however, devices which are few micrometers. So these are devices that make perfect sense in the context of the Internet of Nano things. You could make a race out of them and utilize them in the larger scale too, but I would say for now, because other technologies are already good enough for the long range, we're focusing on the, on the very short, implantable type of uh, range. Graphene could also help advance intelligent reflecting surfaces also known as Reconfigurable Intelligent Surfaces, a technology that promises to improve signal strength in 6G communications. I personally think that at low frequencies, I understand that there are some discussions whether we really need them or not, because at the end means adding a piece of infrastructure. At terahertz frequencies, let's be honest, your signals do not propagate that well. I mean, if you have line of sight, it's great, but if you have obstacles, they will not go through. So, of course, you may need intelligent reflecting surfaces at terahertz, but then how do you control the reflection of a signal at terahertz frequencies? Your traditional devices that you use at microwave or even millimeter wave frequencies do not work. So we are looking at, again, using graphene not as the full reflecting element, but as the phase controller in your reflecting element. Beyond graphene, what are we also doing? Well, in the context of these intelligent reflecting surfaces and finding materials that can be tunable at terahertz frequencies, We've also started some recent collaborations and we're looking into ferroelectric materials and different, other, different type of metallic thin films that can also be programmed at these frequencies. And once you understand what do you change when you do something to it, then it's a matter of engineering, deciding how to better use it for your application. Another area taken off more recently is non-terrestrial networks. While most transmissions take place on Earth, many underserved communities still struggle with internet coverage an issue satellites could solve. So for 6G, we need limitless connectivity, and one of the elements of that is non-terrestrial networks. So that means satellites. So today, we're seeing in the US momentum building, we've had announcements from, from T-Mobile and Apple and others around today's NTN version, which is essentially a modified LTE protocol using Narabanda IoT or CAT-M, and that's using connection to the satellite. The next step of that is to use the release 17 non-terrestrial network standardization process that's happening in 3GPP. And so that will allow us to move to new bands and create wider bandwidth, so it gets more capable service. So we definitely see that extending, and then that will go up to even higher bands within the higher data rates, more and more capability as we move into 6G. But clearly in the middle of an ocean or in a desert, you have to have a satellite as part of that solution for limitless connectivity. If we think even beyond 6G and the expected commercial release around 2030, what possibilities lie ahead? In Joseph Yornet's opinion, biosensing could definitely be on the radar. Many things are happening. So on the one hand, we recently joined how you can also build a joint communications and sensing system at the nano and micro scale, but not to do sensing in the terms of radar, but actually to do biological sensing. So we can use terahertz radiation to both interrogate a tiny implant under your skin and understand what's its sensing status. Like for example, has it encountered any biomarker that relates, for example, to lung cancer? That's the focus of our project. And we, the same signal, we can use it to send information between the implant and the wearable device, but at the same time to extract information from the channel. So, so this is something we did. Of course, whenever we talk about the body, bio, and terahertz, some people get afraid. So we are also we have also been studying the the impact of terahertz radiation on the human body. This is a question that I get many times, even here during these two days at the demo, you know, are these signals safe? So let's just start from the beginning. Yes, they are safe, especially with the powers that we're dealing with. Uh, is there anything that these signals may alter in our body? Well, you know, that, that's the type of thing we're studying. So 
the, the immediate answer is, is no, but maybe. Uh, and by maybe, I mean the following, right? From the moment that we can use terahertz radiation for sensing, it means that there is some exchange of energy between the terahertz signal and what you're trying to sense. Whenever there is an exchange of energy, it means that you can interact. And one of the things that we're looking at is try to make this nanoscale interface between biology and the digital world.